Hello again. This is one of the old city gates in the city of Dordrecht, or Dort, as the locals like to call it. A city in South Holland, close to Rotterdam in the Netherlands. It is a beautiful, small, old city with lots of history. And I came here today to visit not only the city, but this museum, the Museum Simon van Gein. The house itself is 17th century in origin, but was entirely renovated in the 18th century and completed around 1729. The museum, with its interiors and the collections, reflects the period in time when Simon van Gein, a 19th century banker, lawyer and collector, bought the house and lived there, which was from 1864 until his death in 1922. And why am I showing you this house? Well, of course there are miniatures to be found here. And I will show you those later in the video. But first I'd like to show you some of the rooms in the real house. Because these were among some of the examples I've used as inspiration for my large dolls houses. And the room boxes I've built over the years. Like this scullery or utility room for example. If you've seen the kitchens I've made, and I showed you them in vlog 18, although they're not exactly the same, you can clearly see the similarities. And here is the cooking kitchen with its two large windows and the tiled walls and all of the copper. Again, it was a source of inspiration. And this time it is somewhat similar to the kitchen in my second canal house. I love all of the copper. And this contraption, um, does anyone know what it is? We forgot to ask the museum staff, but uh, we were, you know, thinking about either cheese making or perhaps mouse traps. <laughs> but if you know what they are, please let me know in the comments. To the left of the kitchen there was a little fountain for washing your hands, uh, very common in hallways of old Dutch houses, and someone doing some work on the windows, but there was also this storeroom or pantry, and I love these spaces. So much to discover in there. Then back out and across the hallway was the garden room or music room. And behind that was the serving kitchen where the food which was prepared in the cooking kitchen was served from and where dessert was prepared. The fine china and glasses were washed here and also kept here. And this was convenient because it is also right next to the dining room. And if you look through the doors of the dining room, 
across the hallway is a very special room because it is the only remaining complete and intact 18th century reception room with tapestries in the Netherlands. This great room or ballroom was created in 1730 and was cherished and kept by all of the subsequent owners of the building. And Simon van Gijn himself wrote in his will that the room could not be changed. And therefore we today can enjoy this historic room. Now, there are several other interesting and historically important rooms in this house, but I'm going to skip those and take you to the second floor of the house. Or for you Americans out there, that's the third floor. Uh, and there we'll find the laundry attic, which is the room where the freshly washed laundry was dried and folded, pressed and ironed. And again, some of the room boxes I've made in the past were partly based on this room. And all of my drying attic room boxes had uh, drying racks like these attached to the ceiling. And one of the things I really liked in this room, and I'd never seen before actually, were all of these drying cloths. And they all had different writing on them to specify their use. So there was a knife cloth, a doctor's cloth, a bowl cloth, a glass cloth, a silver cloth, a dust cloth, and there were a few others and I couldn't read them all, but I thought it was interesting um, that they all had their, their uh, use um, written on there. Next to the laundry room was a storeroom. And have you spotted it already? There's a little glimpse of what's in store for us in the attic. No, turn around, it's behind us. Yeah, you see, it's a miniature kitchen. It's an old one and it's been played with, but it is a lovely kitchen room box. And this was just a little teaser for what was to come because when I climbed the stairs to the attic I was surprised by lots of display cases full of dolls and toys and miniature scenes and miniature furniture. There was a lot there and it was rather wonderful. <laughs> In the background you can hear the story of Frau Holle being told. I think in English it's called Mother Holde. Uh, it's a fairy tale by the Grimm brothers. Not all of the toys you can see here came from the collection of the family. There are also toys which were purchased specifically for the museum. 
But can you imagine playing with these toys as a kid? The owners of these toys were some very spoiled children. <laughs> Through the doorway on the other side of the attic were several room boxes on display. Now, I couldn't find information on these room boxes, but judging by the clothes and the furniture, they look 19th century to me. I would say somewhere around 1830 to 1840. The second room box was this kitchen room box and I always think these are fun because there's so much to see in there. There are tools for decorating butter on the wall. There's a Dutch roasting oven on the floor. There's food on the table and of course several copper items to be found here. This little copper item on the wall has a wick in it, so it's probably a little oil lamp. Does anyone know? On the other side of the kitchen, the cook is standing by the sink with some freshly washed dishes, a pestle and mortar, a funnel, a candlestick of course, a green enameled colander and a little nutmeg rasp on the wall. And there are more items to be found on the wall, including some more green enamel ware. I do really like these little kitchens. There's always so much there to see. I didn't find this room box of a salon very appealing, but it was interesting that it had pictures of a steam train and a steamship on the walls. These were probably very modern inventions at the time the room box was created. So worth hanging on the wall, I suppose. On the left of the attic were several shops on display, like this butcher shop and a shop selling kitchenware, a tobacco, coffee and tea shop, And this waffle stand. And as I understood it, these were all models from once existing shops in the city of Dordrecht. There were several other miniature displays, like this one which reminded me of an art installation. And perhaps it was, or perhaps it was a representation of an attic where old pieces of furniture and other unwanted items had been dumped. I really like the idea though. The attics are quite dark and then hidden in a corner under the eaves, there's this sudden surprise. It is the late 18th century doll's house by Agnes Maria Clifford from Amsterdam. This doll's house has five rooms, a bedroom, a boudoir or art room, a reception room, a kitchen and a pantry. Agnes started working on this house around 1791 and it looks like she wanted to replicate her Amsterdam Canal house in miniature. And this of course is the bedroom, or in this case it's the lying in room, because the lady of the house just had a baby and is still in bed. And um, I suppose the other two dolls are, the one is a wet nurse and the other one I guess is a visitor. I 
I think Agnes worked on this room a little bit later in her life, um, say 1825 or so, and I'm basing that on the style and the pattern and the color of the fabric she used for the bed curtains and the little crib. And also the color and the pattern of the dress fabric and the style of the dress and the bonnet that the doll is wearing. Next to the bedroom is the boudoir or the art room. But apart from a mixed lot of furniture styles, like the uh, mid 18th century cabinet on the back wall and the tripod table in the center, this room doesn't have a lot going for it. Which cannot be said for the room below it, the reception room or salon. The lovely pale blue silk wall coverings and upholstery and also the large carpet were hand stitched by Agnes. The miniature silver, some furniture and the wooden dolls came from her father's inheritance. And here again Agnes dressed and wigged all of the dolls in period clothing. The doll's clothes are very detailed and follow the latest Dutch fashions of 1785 to 1795. Even the hairstyles and the underclothes are detailed correctly. It's seven o'clock, time for dinner. Meanwhile, in the kitchen, the cook and the maid, who are dressed in traditional Dutch clothes, don't seem to be very busy. Maybe they've already prepared the meal for tonight. The museum had lots more dolls and miniatures on display, like this beautiful model house, which I'd love to get my hands on and make the interiors for. <laughs> but I was visiting the museum with friends and I spent far too much time up here already, so I stopped filming at this point. That's it for today. The museum house Simo van Gein is definitely worth a visit. I really enjoyed myself. So thank you for watching. Until next time. <laughs>